In this video, I'll go through the Year 7 Algebra Test Preview. If you're following with the test preview sheet, I've put some timestamps in the description below so you can skip to question numbers that you need help with. Otherwise, I've put a brief description of what each sort of question is about as well so that you can find the sorts of questions that you're after. Question one's asking us to simplify. In the first example, all we're really doing here is just writing this how we see it algebraically. So the number always goes out the front, and then the letters are usually written in alphabetical order after that. So that is the same as saying 11 times A times T. In the second example, we can do a little bit more. Now, this time, we have to be careful because BODMAS tells us we have to do multiplication before we do addition. So what we'll end up with here is we'll end up with 15 groups of A and three groups of F. And that's as far as we're able to take it because groups of A are different to groups of F, so we can't add those together. Question two is asking us to write expressions for the descriptions below. In algebra, we either write equations or expressions. Equations have equal signs and expressions don't. So this is not going to have any equal signs. What we need to do is skim through the question. We've got three is added, so that means plus to a number, which is being called x. And the result is multiplied times by 7. Okay, so 3 is added to a number. And the result of that is multiplied by 7. And this is our expression. The second example, 5 is subtracted, which means minus from the product, which is times, of 4 and b. Right, well, 4 times b is written as 4b in algebra. That means 4 times b. And then 5 is subtracted or taken away from that. Question 3 is about substitution. Substitution is where you know what the value of the letter is. So in this case, a is 3. And then any time that you sit in an equation, you replace the A with that number. So in this first example, we still don't know B, but we know that A is now 3 and 5, and now we just solve it. So B is 3 plus 5, which is 8. The second example, we're trying to find B again. We still don't have a value for that yet. We keep writing out our equation, and we replace the A with a 3. So in this case, B will be 8 minus 3, which is 5. Question 4 has a substituting again. So we're using substitution. And this time we know the value of H. It's 8. So any time that we see a H in these equations here and here, we're going to replace them with an 8. So K will be 2 times H, which is now 8 plus 3, and BODMAS tells me I have to do multiplication before addition, so we'll go 16 plus 3, so K is 19. In the second example, K will be H, which is 8, divided by 2, that means that K is 4. Even though question 5 looks different to the previous questions, this one's just substitution as well. Okay, So this is just a substitution question. What's happening in this table down here is that um, these are all different values for A. So we're saying what if A was 1, or what if A was 2, or what if A was 3, and we're seeing what happens to our B value when we change our A value. So in the first equation, what's happening here is they're replacing this A here. Oops, that's a big A. Replacing this A here with each of those A values. So it's saying, what if A was 1? Well, then it would become B equals 3 times 1 plus 1. So 3, plus, three times 1 is 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. In the second example, 
says what if a was 2? So now it becomes 3 times 2, which is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. What about if a was 3? Well, that would be 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. What if a was 4? 3 times 4 is 12. 12 plus 1 is 13. And finally, what if a was 5? 3 times 5 is 15. 15 plus 1 is 16. Question 6 is getting us to collect like terms. Now, like terms are ones that can be compared to each other. So they have to have the same configuration or exactly the same combination of letters. So I can add and subtract groups of A, but I can't add and subtract groups of A and B. Okay, so I go through and I identify my like terms. I've got five groups of A and I've got negative groups of A. Notice how the negative sign stays with that term. And I've also got positive groups of 3B and one group of B. And now what I do is I just add my like terms together. So if I've got five groups of A and I take two groups of A away, I'm left with three groups of A. And if I've got three groups of B and I add another group of B, then I have got four groups of B. The second example, I have got negative six groups of M and I've got positive seven groups of M. I've also got positive six groups of N and negative five groups of N. So when I collect up my like terms, I'll have minus six groups of M plus seven groups of M leaves me with positive one group of M's. And if I've got six groups of N and I take five groups of N away, I'm left with one group of N. In question seven, I'm collecting like terms again. This time I've got M's and I've got M squareds. It's important to realise that M's are very different to M squareds. If we just gave M a random value, okay, this doesn't answer the question. Remember that M m is 3, then m squared is the same as saying 3 squared or 3 times 3. Okay, So that would make m squared 9 compared to just a normal m, which would be 3. Okay, So over in this question, whatever this m is, is very different to m squared. So we're not allowed to collect those ones. So here what I've got is two groups of m, and I've got negative group, two groups of m squared, and positive 5 groups of m squared. So if I collect those up, the two m's remain as they are, and then I've got negative 2 groups of m squared, and I add 5 groups of m squared, leaving me 3 groups of m squared. Similarly, in the second one, we have to have exactly the same combination of letters. So I've got one lonely p out here by itself. I've got negative two groups of Q. I've got one positive one group of PQ. And even though this one's written as QP, it's exactly the same combination of letters. So I'm allowed to collect those as like terms. And when I write them out, I'll write them in alphabetical order. So my answer will be the P stays the same. Negative two groups of Q. And then I've got one group of PQ and two groups of PQ, making three groups of PQ altogether. Question eight, we're solving an equation. I'm going to use the balance method. The backtracking method has its place, but you'll need to learn the balance method anyway. So I'm going to show that and suggest that that's the best way for you to learn. The balance method works like a set of scales. So if I've got x plus 3 on this side of the scales and I've got 10 on this side, if I take 3 away from this side, I also have to take 3 away from this side. Otherwise, the scales will tip 
and they won't balance anymore. Okay, so this is how the balance method works. You should try and identify the term that's out by itself, and then you need to do the opposite to what you're told. Okay, so this one says plus three, so what you're going to do is minus three, and that eliminates it. Anything you do to one side of an equation, you must do to the other. So, and your next line of working is all that you have left. So all I've got left is an x on this side. And on this side, I've got 10 minus 3, which makes 7. So the answer to this is that x equals 7. Question 9 is another balance method question. So we're going to solve this equation and find out what the value of x is. This time it's a two-step one, so we're going to need to remove the 4 and the 2. We're going to you remove the 4 first because it's out by itself, okay? And this way we're not going to end up in a situation where we need to divide everything by 4. So here we go, it says to add 4, so I'm going to subtract 4, and that eliminates it. Anything I do to one side of the equation, I have to do to the other. And my next line of working is, all I have left is two x's on the left, and on the right I've got 14 minus 4, which is 10. In the next move, it tells me that I need to do 2 times x. So to remove the 2, I have to do the opposite to times, which is to divide, and that eliminates it. Anything I do to one side, I must do to the other. My next working line of working is, all I have left is x. On this side, I've got 10 divided by 2, which is 5. Question 10 is another balance method question. This one's another two-step question. So this time I need to decide whether to get rid of the 6 or the 2 first. The 6 is by itself, so I'm going to remove that. It says to minus 6. So I'm going to add 6, and that will eliminate it. But anything I do to one side, I must do to the other. My next line of working is, all I have left on the left is 2x's. And on the right, I have 4 plus 6, which makes 10. Now I need to remove the 2. It says 2 times x. So the opposite to times is to divide. If I divide by 2, it will eliminate it. But anything I do to one side, I must do to the other. All I have left on the x, the left is x, and all I have left on the right is 5. Question 11 is a balance method question again. Nice simple one step one this time, but something a little different. It's asking me to divide c by 4. The opposite to divide is to times, so if I times by 4, that will remove it. But anything I do to one side of an equation, I must do to the other. My next line of working is all I have left is C, and all I have left is 5 times 4, which is 20. Question 12 is an interesting balance method question. Next year you'll get taught how to expand these brackets and then simplify, but you haven't been taught that in Year 7 yet. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the 2 first. What this means is, two times everything inside the brackets. So the opposite to times is to divide. So I'll divide by two, and that will remove it. Anything I do to one side of the equation, I must do to the other. So my next line of working is, all I have left on the left is x plus three. And on the right hand side, I've got 10 divided by two, which is five. Now I need to remove the three. It says to add 3, so I'm going to take 3 away. That'll remove it, but anything I do to one side, I must do to the other. All I have left on the left is x, and all I have left on the right is 2.